when you're a third year you're basically halfway through your dentistry degree things start getting a lot more serious and you start thinking about targets and what you need to graduate so here's everything you need to know from timetables to how much i study to what clinics are like and everything in between so let's start with the big changes. At my university, we changed from MCQ style questions, which are more like facts, memorization, things that I think were less like applicable to me and like clinically settings, to ADKs, which are applied dental knowledge questions. And these were very clinically based. They were very much like orientated around how a patient would present in clinics, what you would do, solutions and problems like that, which I think was so much better because the way that you study for both of these are completely different. I actually think that studying for ADKs is easier because you're doing clinics and that's how you learn anyways by doing the thing and studying for ADKs actually just prepared you for clinic which is something that you need to prepare for anyways you know with your targets and your exams clinical exams that you have and because clinics is something that you're going to be doing for the rest of your life when you graduate I think that revising for these clinical exams these ADKs was honestly so much easier because it really set you up for your career afterwards as well I felt like I am much more of a dentist now than I was before year three. So in terms of seeing patients, I saw patients two times a week, which was pretty good. It was the same as in second year, but I know that for in my university, they changed it to three times a week now for third years, which I think is really interesting. I think especially because of COVID that a lot of patients were not coming in and there were a lot of telephone consultations and stuff like that. But now that there is more time, there's a lot more time to practice. I think that can only be a good thing. Clinics is something that your time is very valuable what do you what patients you have and what you, they present with all of these things are really important to get your targets to get your clinical capabilities but also just to get experience just to figure out okay this is how you do dentures I think you know the more clinics that you do the better I think also that you start getting accustomed to how tiring clinics can be but yeah that year is like a very big year to grow because I think you start feeling more like a dentist you are able to do more things than just composite fillings and stuff like that you're able to do rcts rotary endo and crowns and all of these fun things that you know you wouldn't have been able to do in second year at clinics basically how it works is you have two slots so you have a 9 to 12 slot and then a 1 to 4 slot i think and basically what happens is in the morning you are usually either the dentist or a nurse and if you are the dentist in the morning then you're probably going to be the nurse in the afternoon after lunch and so basically one person in your pair is the dentist the other person nurses and then you swap in the afternoon and that's basically how you see patients it's really like it's a really good way that you get to have experience with not only treating your own patients and you get that help from your clinical partner but also when they're treating patients you almost get to see like double the procedures in third year was also the first year that we got to see peds so that was really really exciting seeing all these little kids and giving them stickers and you know it was really interesting because i had some patients that were a nightmare and then i had some patients that were really really anxious that were really scared that wouldn't even like let me get near her with even a toothbrush not even just like a probe and like was sitting on their parents lap and so like communication skills all of that stuff like it really came into hand i also did like a lot of procedures because surprisingly a lot of patients and a lot of kids had like decay and stuff like that and obviously you want to make sure that their deciduous teeth their baby teeth are okay they last until the permanent teeth come through so it was a lot of like management, there was a lot of orthodontics, it can get very overwhelming but yeah that was really fun and I'm seeing more peep patients this year as well so that's really exciting and really helpful. Another thing that I really learned in third year was I really started getting on top of my targets so I tried to be as efficient as possible, trying to get my patient's treatment done in as efficiently as possible, trying to you know kind of get those kind of procedures done so I can get more patients in as well and you know see more patients, get more targets but also be able to deliver that care to more people because a lot of the time especially when you're new and especially in like first year and second year I used to spend a lot of time talking to the patient you know making them feel comfortable and stuff like that but you don't need to talk to them for like half an hour to make them feel comfortable you can kind of like cut back on that kind of really make them feel reassured make them feel like they're being listened to but also provide them like good treatment and stuff like that so yeah I really like started stepping it up seeing multiple patients per slot and that was really helpful I feel like in third year I was so I'm currently in fourth year right now but I feel like in third year I was very organized with how I did my patients and stuff like that because we have certain clinical exams every year so third year fourth year fifth year and i started doing some of my fourth year ones a lot of people started doing their fifth year ones as well I'm trying to tick these things off because that means in the next year you just have one less thing to worry about and that's something i made sure i did so every single patient that i could extract teeth with i made sure that i could try and do that exam with it and stuff like that and another key component for this is my patient diary so this is my clinical diary this is so 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 helpful i've talked about it like 
so many times it basically has like those like binder things and I can basically take out the papers and put them straight back in as well they also have like dividers so I can split them up into ortho keys perio all of that stuff and I usually have like a instrument list I also have a step-by-step -step how to carry out that procedure list as well as like useful information like for example if I'm doing an extraction it tells me exactly which four sets are used for which teeth as well as which movements I need to do and like post-op advice and stuff like that so I don't forget anything and yeah it's just so helpful if you want to see a walkthrough of how of this book as well as how I organize things for clinics make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that video and yeah <laughs> so my timetable is kind of hectic I'll show you an example of it over here but basically we have clinics two times a week and obviously now we'll three times a week but for me it was just two times a week and then I had EBL I think once a week which was basically like an evidence-based learning thing or some other universities call it PBL and basically what it is is where you have like cases so like fake patients and they have like medical histories and medications and like problems with their teeth and expectations and then they have like complicated family history and stuff like that so you basically like kind of like take these like topics home like for example like success rates in endodontics and stuff like that and you talk about it in relation to the patient and then you discuss the patient all together when you come back with your research and stuff like that so this was something that we had once a week and it was quite useful actually to be honest it's a very long process though it's something that you're like oh my god I have to spend like all day like researching all these things and stuff like that but it is really helpful you know talking about these things to other people and figuring out you know where maybe you might have gaps in your knowledge and where they might have gaps in their knowledge having a facilitator there as well so they kind of like guide you through okay this is what you kind of need to know this is what you need to focus on blah 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 stuff like that it was really really helpful I think a lot of people at my university say um, that are graduated now say that you know this like it prepares you for being a foundation dentist for seeing these complicated patients and stuff like that because obviously we have our own patients but not everyone's patients are going to have be the same some might be really complex some might be really simple it's good that we get the exposure to these kind of patients and for example if a patient's on these medications and they have an INR reading of xyz how would you manage this patient and stuff like that so it's really helpful I think there is a book called clinical problem solving in dentistry I think that kind of goes through cases as well not in the same way obviously but I think if you don't have something similar at your university that might be something you might want to look at it's a really really good book it goes through like patient cases one by one and it goes through differential diagnoses and stuff like that so I think that's really helpful check that out and on the rest of the days I usually have like a nine to five lectures thank god for zoom though because honestly I don't think I would have had the like the focus to even be like present in those lectures and taking notes and stuff like that because honestly it was a very hectic year, it was a very tiring year, I don't know how people do it um, before Zoom but yeah after Zoom obviously that was amazing, obviously I could do all of them in the comfort of my bedroom and yeah but there were a lot of lectures, a lot of important lectures, you know orthodontics, dentures, we were very heavy on dentures last year, yeah I think that was basically like a typical week in my life. With studying I pretty much don't like to cram, I have this thing which I've like noticed about myself is that like the two weeks leading or like specifically the week leading up to an exam if i haven't studied i am not the type of person to to try and study all night and stuff like that i used to be i've just realized i'm the kind of person that like would be so stressed that the fact that the exam is so close that i actually would not be able to focus so i have to make sure that i study leading up to the exam um so obviously like i start hardcore studying like a month before the exam and then i slowly like wean off when it gets closer to two weeks close like when it's only two weeks closer to the exam but on the general I try and keep on top of my work so I try and do all the lectures when they come I try and keep on top of my revision and obviously if I know that I'm lacking in certain areas then I would make sure that I go back and spend some time on that during like the start of the year when I don't have exams and another thing is obviously I know that there are higher yield like topics like I always know that cysts and like perio and dentures and like there are certain things that I know always come up so obviously I'm going to focus more time on that medical emergencies is one that always comes up on my exam so I make sure that I focus on those and that way I don't have to study as much as I you know other people probably do I will have a video soon coming up on how to study effectively in dental school and how I study and how I organize my things so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that but yeah that should be coming soon
And with studying, especially because it was very clinically based, I think it was a lot easier just to keep on top of it because whenever I had patients, I'd always look them up beforehand, write down all the medications that they're on, figure out what their possible treatment plans would be, what are the guidelines for X, Y, Z, you know, stuff like that, which I think really helped. And especially whenever I was confused about something, I always asked my clinical supervisors and they kind of explained things to me and that really helps, especially in ADK because that kind of stuff you don't get in textbooks but yeah that was just something else that really helped i think i have also like a whole notion page on dentistry and basically i have toggles which are basically like bullet points but like you can hide stuff under them and i have different headings like perio ortho restorative uh, prosto all of those things medical emergencies dental emergencies medication pharmacology all of that stuff kind of like this book but a little bit different and i have like different topics underneath it like for example i know i have crowns and then under crowns i have like the preparations and the materials and like how to do these things and stuff like that so i kind of already have like a list of things that i know i need to do and when i'm doing my ebl cases my patient cases i know that okay so i'm like okay i need to make sure i look up on the different types of sedation methods or something like that and then I put that under my little tree of knowledge and so um, as I'm going through the year I'm usually like filling these things out I'm like learning about the different sedation methods I'm learning about you know the different components in LA or the different types of LA that there are and the different you know nerves and I don't know the like different crown preps the different you know materials used for all of these like alginate impressions and stuff like that so I have like a load of bullet points that I need to like fill in but that kind of gives me like a rough idea of what I need to learn and then once I finished it and I don't really make notes but I have like questions and I transfer there's like a plugin that you can use to transfer over to Anki and then you can do space repetition and stuff like that there are kind of ways that you can hack because obviously clinical dentistry you don't think okay this is not stuff that you can just like factually memorize but there are ways to incorporate these effective study methods in and yeah I'll definitely make sure I include all of these things in that video that I'm making soon make sure you don't miss that like don't get me wrong though like you can't get away with doing nothing in dental school but you definitely don't need to be doing the most like you don't need to be spending every single minute of your day studying and that's definitely not what a lot of people do so yeah all of this work will kind of lead you up to fourth year which is what I'm currently in and it's really like set me up for clinics and seeing patients and hitting my targets and all of those things this year and that's because in fifth year the year after this I will be basically swamped with stuff like SJT and exit case and you know interviews if they ever come back but I don't think they will be and stuff like that for you know becoming a graduate so organizing these things earlier on will really just set you up to graduate easily so I'll be having some videos that are coming out soon on how my first year and second year in dental school went but I also have so many other videos on my channel talking about how to get into dental school as well as life of a dental student because I'm now a fourth year and productivity tips and so 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 many videos so make sure you check those out on my channel as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on loads of new content that's coming up and comment down below because I reply to every single one of them and I will see you in the next one. Bye!